We're taught that flight began in 1903 at Kitty Hawk. That story is incomplete. A thousand years earlier, Chinese engineers had already solved the hardest problems of flight. Lift, stability, propulsion, and control. The same four problems every airplane and rocket still has to solve today, using nothing but wood, silk, and observation. What the Wright brothers proved in 1903 relied on physics that had already been explored centuries earlier. Today, we're breaking down 10 ancient Chinese inventions that conquered the air long before flight had a name. And once you see them, modern aviation history will never look the same. Thousands of years ago, Chinese engineers were already studying air as something that could be measured, shaped and used, not just endured. Every device I'm about to show you uses real physics principles. Modern engineers have tested these designs. They actually work. Many of the same physical principles still appear in modern aerospace engineering today. We're talking about wind measurement systems, deployable structures, multi-stage rockets, human flight. But here's what makes this even more incredible. These weren't accidents. These weren't lucky guesses. This was systematic engineering problem-solving, innovation. They understood principles we didn't rediscover until the 20th century. All of this, 1,000 years early. Today, we're counting down 10 inventions that prove ancient China conquered the air. From simple wind vanes to human-carrying kites, each one more incredible than the last. And number one, it's going to change how you think about human flight forever. So buckle up. We're about to take a journey through the most advanced ancient technology you've never heard of. But before we dive into flying machines, we need to start with something simpler, something that changed everything, the wind. See, most people think wind is just wind. It blows, it stops, random, unpredictable. But Chinese engineers in the second century BC saw something different. They saw data. Picture this. You're a Han Dynasty Emperor. You need to know which way the wind blows for military campaigns, for sailing, for construction. So what do you do? Chinese engineers mounted bird-shaped vanes on palace roofs. These weren't decorations. They were precision instruments. Here's the genius part. They took something invisible wind direction and made it visible, measurable, useful. The same principle powers modern weather stations, airport wind indicators, even the sensors on your car that tell you wind speed. But here's what's truly incredible. This was one of the earliest scientific instruments to treat air as something you could measure and eventually engineer. Think about that. While the rest of the world saw air as empty space, China saw it as a fluid something with direction, force, properties you could measure and use. This was the moment humans realized air could be studied, predicted and engineered, not just some simple weather tool. But reading the wind was just the beginning. Now imagine you need to move air, but you also need to carry your air moving device everywhere you go. Impossible, right? Not for Chinese engineers. By the medieval period, Chinese craftsmen had turned the folding fan into a precision machine. Ribs, pins, and carefully controlled movement. A deceptively simple, but precise mechanism. Think of it as one of the world's most refined early collapsible technologies. Folded, nearly zero space. Open, serious air moving power. But here's what most people miss. This isn't just about staying cool. This is deployable structure engineering, maximum surface area when you need it, minimum storage space when you don't. The same logic powers spacecraft solar arrays that unfold in space, deployable antennas, emergency shelters. Chinese fan makers were solving the area to volume ratio problem in everyday objects 1,000 years before we put satellites in orbit. How can we relate? Imagine, each rib works as a radial spar. The fan leaf becomes a deployable air-moving surface. The rivet system allows controlled rotation around a single axis. This simple fan 
uses the same deployable structure logic engineers still rely on today. Compact when stored, wide when deployed. While they mastered moving air by hand, Chinese astronomers were building something even more incredible. Here's where things get really wild. In the first century AD, Zhang Hung built something that sounds like science fiction. A water-powered bronze planetarium that tracked the stars automatically. No computers, no electricity, just flowing water and bronze gears. Picture this machine. It modelled the motion of the major stars and celestial bodies throughout the day. It rotates to match Earth's rotation. It modelled the motion of major celestial bodies and star systems known at the time. This was one of the earliest known examples of automated mechanical tracking. 1400 years before Europe built its first mechanical clock. But here's what makes this truly incredible. This wasn't just for show. This was GPS for ancient navigation, star tracking for ocean voyages, astronomical prediction for agriculture. The same principle powers modern telescope tracking systems, satellite positioning, even the gyroscopes in your phone. Zhang Hung figured out continuous drive systems, uniform rotational rates, celestial coordinate tracking, all powered by flowing water. This was one of the world's earliest automated tracking systems, and it worked reliably enough to be used for real-world navigation. But tracking the sky was preparation for something bolder. Now here's where Chinese engineers started playing with gravity itself. Early Chinese stories and illustrations describe people using large surface area canopies, umbrellas, hats and covers to slow their descent. Sounds crazy, right? It's actually perfect physics. See, they figured out something incredible. Air isn't empty, it pushes back. The bigger your surface area, the more air pushes back. The more air pushes back, the slower you fall. They were intuitively exploiting terminal velocity 1600 years before da Vinci drew his famous parachute design. Here's the physics. Drag force grows with velocity and surface area. Increase the canopy area and drag balances weight at a lower terminal velocity. Even without equations, they understood the principle. Big hat equals safer jump. The engineering significance here cannot be overstated. They weren't just guessing. Their experiments and stories show they understood that more surface meant a safer fall. It was early intuitive engineering of air resistance for safer, more controlled descents. The same principle powers every parachute today. Every base jumping wingsuit. Every space capsule heat shield. They turned air from an enemy into a tool. Slowing down falling objects was clever, but making them fly straight that required solving an even harder problem. Song Dynasty rocketeers discovered a brutal truth. If the tail is wrong, the rocket tumbles. Picture this, you've got gunpowder, you've got a tube, you light it, it flies. But where does it go? Nowhere useful. It spins, it tumbles, it crashes. So what do you do? Add feathers, add sticks, add a tail. Suddenly? perfect flight. Here's the engineering genius. They figured out the centre of pressure problem. A projectile stays nose forward when its centre of pressure lies behind its centre of gravity. The tail surfaces force alignment with the airstream. This is exactly how modern rockets work. Missiles, even darts. But here's what's incredible. They solved this nearly 1,000 years before formal ballistics textbooks existed. No wind tunnels. No computer simulations just trial and error, and brilliant observation. Song Dynasty engineers understood that air has force, direction, predictable effects on moving objects. They turned chaotic flight into controlled flight, random trajectories into precise targeting. The same stabilization principles still govern modern rockets today. Stable flight was just the foundation for their next breakthrough. The 14th century Fire Dragon Manual documents something that sounds impossible. A dragon-shaped rocket device that travels over water, then ignites multiple smaller rockets inside. 
This is multi-stage propulsion, 600 years before NASA made it famous. Here's how it works. Stage one, the carrier body uses its rocket charge to reach the target area. Stage two, interior arrow rockets ignite after the initial flight. The fire dragon didn't reach orbit, but the underlying logic, stage propulsion, is the same concept used in modern rocketry. One propulsion phase to get positioned, another phase to do the real work. Think about this. Chinese engineers understood that you could chain propulsion systems, sequence them, time them. This is rocket staging, the foundation of all space travel. But here's what's truly incredible. They figured this out for military applications. River defences, area bombardment. They weren't trying to reach space, they were trying to win wars. But they invented the logic that modern spaceflight is built upon. The same staging logic powers every satellite launch today, every Mars mission, every space station resupply. But rockets were just one way they conquered the air. Third century AD, Chinese strategists needed to send signals across battlefields, over rivers, through enemy territory, so they built flying messengers, sky lanterns, hot air balloons in miniature. Here's the physics. Heat the air inside the lantern. Hot air is less dense than cold air. For a fixed volume, that makes the total mass lighter than surrounding air. Net upward, buoyant force. The lantern rises. This is exactly the same principle behind Montgolfier's hot air balloon, flown in France in 1783. Chinese engineers were flying hot air devices 1,500 years earlier. But here's what's incredible. They understood buoyant lift long before the science behind it was formally defined. They figured out that air has density, that density changes with temperature, that you could engineer buoyancy. No equations, no gas laws, just observation and experimentation. They turned heat into flight, fire into lift. The same principle powers every hot air balloon today. Weather balloons, even some experimental aircraft. Floating in air was impressive, but what about controlled, sustained flight? Chinese kite makers spent 2,000 years perfecting something incredible. Bamboo and silk frames with cellular bracing, high aspect ratio surfaces, multi-cell structures. This wasn't just for fun, this was serious engineering. Here's the genius, cellular stability. Multiple rectangular cells increase torsional stiffness. Stacked surfaces increase lift. The kite stays aligned. It generates more upward force. It flies better. When early aviation pioneers like Lawrence Hargrave and later the Wright brothers designed the first airplanes, they used box and biplane kites to prototype wing shapes. They were formalizing structural tricks that generations of Chinese kite makers had already explored with bamboo and silk, multi-cell frames. You might be surprised. The first airplane was basically a powered evolution of a kite-based airframe. Same style of bracing, same biplane style stacked surfaces, same focus on high lift. Chinese kite makers had already solved stable, controllable lift in tethered flight. They just didn't have engines. But here's what's truly incredible. They understood that air could support weight, that you could engineer lift, that structure mattered for stability, all without knowing anything about Bernoulli's principle or angle of attack. Fixed wing flight was revolutionary, but they also cracked rotary wing flight. Fourth century AD. Chinese toy makers created something that would inspire aviation pioneers 1700 years later. The bamboo dragonfly. A stick with blades. Spin it between your palms. It flies. This 1700 year old toy solved the helicopter problem in miniature. Here's the physics. A rotor blade with pitch acts as a rotating wing. Each element generates lift as it slices through air. Integrate the upward force. If it exceeds weight, the toy rises. Modern helicopters use exactly this principle. Quadcopters, military aircraft. But here's what's incredible. 
George Cayley and other aviation pioneers literally spun copies of this device while inventing aeronautical theory. They reverse engineered a Chinese toy to understand rotary wing flight. Think about that. The foundation of helicopter technology came from a bamboo toy. Chinese engineers figured out that rotation could create pure upward force, that you could engineer vertical lift, no equations, no wind tunnels, just brilliant observation of how air behaves around spinning objects. This simple device demonstrated the core principle behind rotary wing flight. But the most incredible achievement, they put humans in the air. Here it is, the most incredible achievement in ancient engineering, tethered human flight. 2,000 years before powered aircraft, Chinese engineers didn't stop at toys. By the early medieval period, they were strapping humans to giant bamboo and silk kites. The Book of Sui records the tyrant Gao Yang using man-carrying devices to execute prisoners by forced flight. Marco Polo described Chinese practices of tying men to large grid-frame kites, using their flight as omens for naval expeditions. Not a mere mythology, but an impressive engineering. In engineering terms, a man-lifting kite is a tethered, unpowered aircraft, a controllable aerial platform, stabilized by aerodynamic design and ground crew. They demonstrated controlled, tethered human lift more than 2,000 years before powered aircraft. Think about this. While Europe was in the Dark Ages, China was flying people. For reconnaissance, for ritual, for testing wind conditions. They understood that air could support human weight, that you could engineer lift at human scale, that controlled flight was possible. Here's what's truly mind-blowing. They showed that the fundamental problem of aviation, getting humans into the air, could be solved with engineered kites. They did it with unpowered aircraft and ground crews instead of engines. For the first time in history, a human left the ground, not by accident, not by myth, but by design. 10 Inventions One Incredible Truth China solved the core problems of flight centuries earlier than modern aviation. Every principle I showed you is still used today. From weather vanes to space rockets. From parachutes to helicopters. But here's what this really means. Innovation doesn't happen when we think it happens. Genius doesn't follow our timelines. Somewhere right now, someone is solving problems we think are impossible. Building things we think can't exist, just like Chinese engineers did 2,000 years ago. Which invention impressed you most? Drop a comment and let me know. Was it the multi-stage rockets? The human flight? The automated star tracker? If you want more mind-blowing engineering secrets from history, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next. The future isn't always invented next. Sometimes it's rediscovered.